Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Thursday Night Bible Study. We're going to give you a few minutes to sign in. And when you sign in, if you would say hello so that we know you are listening. Um, it was brought to my attention that last Sunday's message, we had 100 people that viewed it. Oh, wow. So it's growing and it's a start. And just think y'all are a part of that. Donald, welcome. God bless you. Um, so, you know, the word of God is going outside the walls of the building. Yeah. Yeah. And, and again, we are the church. Amen. The building isn't the church. We are the church. Yes. The building is a place of where we come to worship, the house of worship. And so, uh, and Donald says, I am here. We see you, Donald. We're Welcome. And so, um, yeah, you know, so we are the church and we take the church wherever we go. And that's why it's important that we are a light. That's why it's important that things that we speak are words of faith. Yes. You know, you were talking a few minutes ago, Raymond, about um, faith is uh, a made up mind thing. I liked how you put that. You said you were share what you got on Sunday. Uh, faith is basically making up your mind by going forward. And if there's a mountain that's in front of you, say, be cast into the sea. Yeah. Because there's where faith starts. It's like you always said, faith is now. Faith is now. And it's the beginning of many things. And I, and I like what you said. Faith is a made-up mind. Your mind is made up. This is what the Word says. This is I, what I believe. And I believe I'm going to see it. There and, you go. That's it. And, and it, you know, we were talking about the woman with the issue of blood. She had a made up mind. Mm -hmm. I, if, what, I just touches, mm -hmm, that I shall be made whole. And she kept on saying that as she was reaching out to Jesus. And, you know, that's a word for us that we have to continue to um, have that made up mind. The word of God says this. I believe the word and I will receive what I believe. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's not being, you know, uh, new age. It's not being anything but what the Word of God says. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says a double-minded man will not receive anything. Right. And so you can't be double-minded. You have to be, you have to set your mind. You have to have a made-up mind that this is what God says. And that's why it's important we pray and seek God's will for our lives. You know, this is, God, what do you want to do? Mm -hmm. Show me what you want to do. Please. Yeah. Please Amen. Show me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. I'm begging you to show me. <laughs> and he'll he'll begin to show you bits and pieces. Wow. And I think a lot of people are looking for the big picture with that and thinking that um and and overlooking the little pictures on the way. Like wh how did you get here? Yeah. How did the Lord um how did he lead you to that place? You know, you may not be where you need to be, but at least you're not where you used to be, yeah. right? And so it's important, and we need to fan the flame. You know, uh, you know, David encouraged himself in the Lord, and you know, David wasn't perfect, no. and uh, David made mistakes, and you know, even when he committed adultery and then had her husband killed, basically by putting him at the front of the uh, the line, you know, the army, and then you know, he went on his own merry way until the prophet came to him and told him a story. And he told him the story in um, respect for David's position as king. He didn't disrespect him as he was just saying, this is the story. And David, and then the prophet said, now what would you do? And he said all these things and you know, oh, and it's you. And it's you. <laughs> and, uh, but David repented. Yeah. Once he realized he committed a sin, he repented. Now, there were some consequences for it, oh, yeah. but he repented. And so, and you know, and you have to remember the lineage of Jesus comes to David. Even with David making all of his mistakes and, um, and he repented, but still the lineage of Jesus comes to David. But David was God's great. Yeah. I love David. Because oh. even Saul, he said, God says, I repent myself of putting him as king. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And then he appointed 
David. David. Yep. And David was a man of God. He had a heart after God. And there's and Debbie we welcome. That he, that he did all he did. Yeah. But God, that he repented, but God loved him so much that God forgave him everything he did. Right. Because God loved him. Because yeah. God knew what was in his heart. Yeah. Amen. One story that I resemble a lot with is a story with Job. With who? Job. Oh, Job? Job. Yeah. yeah. Oh, going through all those different things. Yeah. And, and it was a, you know, it was a journey for Job. Um, you know, where he had to come to the end of himself. And, you know, the difference between um, Saul and David Saul did not have a repentive heart. No. Saul made excuses. David had a heart after God and he repented and got back on track. Mm -hmm. But Saul would do, he wanted to do it his way, no. not God's way. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's what killed Saul. Yep. Because God told him to do something. He did the, the, the totally opposite. And he did it three times. And God says, I'm done with yeah. you. Yeah. Because you're not listening. Yeah. I told you to do this and you're not doing yeah. it. Amen. Well, let's get started tonight as more people are going to uh, sign in. And if I didn't say hello to you, um, thank you for joining us tonight. And and uh, we're going to talk about Reboot. And I sent out a, a message um, uh, on Saturday, I believe it was. I just felt like the Lord was saying, it's time for a reboot. And it seems like maybe you're standing and you believe in God for something and and you're not quite seeing it manifest, or maybe you just kind of become weary and um, you just feel like your prayers aren't being answered or you're just not experiencing the Lord like you used to. And, and I believe the Lord is saying it's time to reboot. And it's kind of like our smartphones or our computers when it's, there's a glitch or they're not quite working really as good as they should. What do we do? We turn them off and we turn them back on to reboot mm -hmm. so that maybe the glitch is causing something not to, the program in it not to work quite right so when you turn it off and you turn it back on it causes things to come back together and then um, you're able uh, to continue on and I think there's times when we need to reboot with the Lord okay Lord where what I am I missing something am I you know, I haven't been spending as much time with the Lord or I haven't been in the Bible much or I haven't been praying or whatever it is. You know, God is a God of reboot. And it kind of reminds me of the story about the potter and the clay. You know, he's molding the pot, you know, the clay and he's working on the vessel and come to find out the vessel is marred. There's, a, a, you know, we could say there was just something wrong with it. Instead of the potter throwing it away, it says he reshapes it. And the same for us. You know, God didn't throw us away. He just, there's just this time of reshaping us. Um, and so the same with rebooting. I, and I had a lot of response to the message that I sent out is, the, oh, yeah, I needed to hear that. I needed to be reminded. And there's times that we need to be reminded. You know, you get a word or you get a word just like what you brought tonight, Raymond, when we were in prayer about having a made up mind. You know, when God tells us something or we're believing God, good evening, Pastor Bob and Pastor Jan. All right. um, when, you know, the Lord is telling us something and he, he's giving you a word, you, you know, and that's it. You have to have a made up mind. You've got to make up your mind. I'm going to believe God even when it takes time to come forth. But the devil will try to get you to believe that you haven't heard from God mm -hmm. or you're not doing the right thing or this or that. And so that's why I think it's important to reboot and say, OK, there's just too much going on in my head right now. There's just too much going on in my life. I need to just step back, go spend some time with the Lord and get back on track or reboot. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk about David, King David. And we were just sharing about how David wasn't, he wasn't perfect. You read the Psalms and you can see, you can tell a lot of what's going on in David's heart and his mind. And um, even, and he sought the Lord. He sought the Lord for direction. Should we go after the Philistines? Should we do this? And the Lord would say, yeah, you go after him, you're going to win. 
And then he said, then another time he said, should we go after the Philistines? And the Lord says, uh, well, instead of doing it this certain way, I want you to surround him and wait for this sound. So, you know, David is asking for direction and instruction from the Lord and the Lord's giving him instruction and the instruction may not be the exact same instruction as time before. And I think that's what gets us in trouble a lot of times is because we feel that God did this uh, certain thing a certain way. And instead of going back to the Lord saying, oh, yeah, Lord, you did it this way. So um, you're going to do it the same way in this next situation. Well, we didn't seek him and how he wanted us. What should we do? How should we um, walk in it or how should we, you know, whatever it is. And, and so we just do the same thing over again and we don't get the same results. And then we feel discouraged and feel defeated. But it's, a, you know, prayer is a two way street. Two way street. When we talk to the Lord, we need to take the time to listen to the Lord for instruction. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to talk about David tonight and King David, I should say. And we're going to start in 2 Samuel chapter 6. And, um, you know, we've talked about this and I preached on it before, but I just feel like the Holy Spirit is going to, you know, speak to us uh, and uh, speak through us through the word. But also, you know, Raymond, you said on Sunday, as you're sitting in the word, the Lord is speaking to you. He's giving you some revelation. He's giving you some uh, some words. And that's what the word of God does. That's the job of the Holy Spirit. When the word of God is being preached, the Holy Spirit begins to speak to you. And I might be talking about the big door from heaven, you know, the windows of heaven, let's say. And as you're sitting in the word and the Holy Spirit's flowing and he's ministering to you, he may begin to talk to you about your personal relationship with Christ. Well, Pastor Tony's talking about windows. Well, the Holy Spirit is the great uh, multitasker that he can, he, you know, he could be speaking to you uh, Juan Carlos about a certain thing and be speaking to Raymond about a different thing. And I'm talking about the windows of heaven. It's because the word of God is alive mm -hmm. and he ministers the Holy Spirit. Remember, his job is to remind us of what Jesus has already said. And so the word of God, it, you know, it, Paul, it talks about that it's an inspired. Paul was inspired by the Holy Spirit to write those, uh, you know, different letters and what we call books in the Bible. So tonight, I believe that the Holy Spirit's going to speak to you as the word is going out. Good evening, Bernadette. Welcome. And so I want us to open ourselves up for the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, right now, we lay down our agenda. We lay down our will and we desire that your will be done. Holy Spirit, we welcome you here right now to speak to us through your word. I thank you for greater revelation. I thank you for aha moments. I thank you for, as we talk about rebooting, that you're going to show each and every one of us in how to reboot. And so right now, we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. You know, it's interesting talking about reboot. And Pastor Bob, I know he gives us examples about computers and yes. because he's very, you know, he's into tech and technology. And so Pastor Bob, I know uh, this will definitely make sense to you as well as it will to each of us. So anyway, we're going to go on to Second Samuel chapter 6, verse 1. And what's interesting about this is David um, it just came back from defeating the Philistines. And so David had a desire to bring the Ark of God into his city, the city of David. And, you know, again, we were talking about David having a heart after God. And he knew about, he, he had an understanding about the presence of God. The presence of God would, uh, we would say, was, would hover or be up on the Ark of the Covenant between the cherubs on um, the Ark. Um, and so David had an understanding that he had, a, he said, had such a love for God and a heart after God, he wanted God's presence in his city. So he comes up with this um, idea. <laughs> um, obviously, it wasn't a godly idea, but it was an idea. And his heart was he wanted to bring the presence of God into the city. 
And that's a lot of time that this is going to be a great way to remind us when we have ideas, we need to go to the Lord and ask him, is this a godly idea or is it uh, my idea? And so it goes on to say, David again brought together out of Israel chosen men, 30,000 in all. 30,000 in all he brought together. He and all of his men set out from uh, Bala of Judah to bring up from the, there the ark of God, which is called by the name, the name of the Lord Almighty, who is enthroned between the cherubim that are on the ark. They set the ark of God on a new cart and brought it in from the house of Abedidim, uh, Abedab, I guess it is, which was on the hill. Uzzah and Ahio, uh, sons of Abedidim, <laughs> were guiding the new cart with the ark of God on it. Now Ahio was walking in front of it. David and the whole house of Israel were celebrating with all their might before the Lord with songs and with harps, lyres, tambourines, cisterns, and cymbals. So we're going to just stop there for a second. So David has the Ark of God uh, put on this cart, this new cart. Mm -hmm. And so he's excited mm -hmm. and they're rejoicing and they're dancing before the presence of God. And again, remember, David had a heart after God. Mm -hmm. He wanted to be close to God. He wanted God where he was. And remember, the Holy Spirit at that time, until Jesus died on the cross, um, you know, the, they would have to, the priest would have to go into the Holy of Holies and have these sacrifices, make these sacrifices on, behind, beyond, on behalf of the people. And so it would only be the, the, the uh, priests that would experience the presence of God in that sense. But when Jesus died on the cross, the veil was torn from top to bottom. And as we accept Jesus, we receive his spirit that lives within us. So now we are the living temple of the Holy Spirit. And so David and all the people are rejoicing before uh, the ark of God and where the presence of God is. And, and they're doing all the celebration. And they're excited. They're bringing in the presence of God into the city. And then it goes on in verse 6. It says, when they came to the threshing floor, floor Uzzah reached out and took hold of it, took hold of the ark of God. Because the oxen stumbled, the Lord's anger burned against Uzzah because of his irreverent act. Therefore, God struck him down, and he died there beside the ark of God. So again, you know, it was holy. And if you knew anything about it, is that it would, they were, they were told the way to move the ark would be priests would carry the ark and it would be carried a certain way. But David was bringing it in, not as the Lord has instructed him to do it. It was a good idea, but it wasn't a godly idea. And somebody died because of it. There was consequences for not following that, you know, that direction of God. Their heart was in the right place. There's a lot of people with the heart in the right place. Good evening, Yolanda. Um, and there's a lot of Christians where their heart's in the right place. But we're not seeing the results. You know, that's where we have to step back. Why are we not seeing the results that the Bible promises us? Mm -hmm. It isn't God's fault. What are we doing that's we're missing the mark? Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking about getting into works. I'm talking about following the instructions of the Lord. David, we're going to go back to that. David had a heart after God. He had a great idea in bringing in the presence. There was nothing wrong about bringing the presence of God to his city. Mm -hmm. It was how they brought the presence of God into their city. That was wrong. And there was consequences for that. Now, we live under grace, and I understand all of that. But we have to understand there's biblical principles there's kingly principles. There, there are godly principles that we must follow to see the results of receiving. You, you know what I mean? Yes. And so, again, I don't want us to get into works and say, oh, you know, that means I'm going to have to do this, this. No, let's follow the instructions of the Lord. Let's follow his instructions. Let's ask the Lord, how do you want me to pray? Lord, what do you want me to say? 
how do you want me to go about um, receiving what you have promised me? And, uh, and, and I love, I have to go back to what you said tonight, Raymond. You got to have a made up mind. You know, uh, meaning that when the word of God says that by his stripes you have been made whole, then you have to made, have a made up mind. I'm going to receive my healing. Yes. But the doctor said, you need to prepare for your funeral. Well, I'm going to put my trust in the Lord and um, I'm going to trust him and I'm going to have a made up mind. Now, there's nothing wrong about having... Uh, funeral arrangements and stuff like that, because one day we are going to leave this planet. Mm -hmm. But if you're planning your funeral because the doctor says you're going to die, you know, you want to step back and say, okay, what is the purpose of doing that? Am I planning on dying or am I planning on living? And again, there's nothing wrong about having funeral arrangements for the time comes. There's nothing wrong with that. But what is your motive? That may be, be a, that is probably a good way of looking at it. Why do you want the Lord to heal you? Why do you want the Lord to bless you with this? And I've said this, you know, about the kingdom we were teaching. You know, you want the Lord to bless you with a yacht. We'll use that. Why? What are you going to do to use that yacht for the glory of God? Chances are you're not going to use that yacht to glorify God. You're going to use it for your own thing. And there's nothing wrong about enjoying life and enjoying nice things. But when God blesses us, we need to have, okay, Lord, bless me for this. How can I use this to glorify you? How can I show others that I serve a big God and I'm using this for the benefit of bringing more people to the Lord? And I'm just using that as an example. And again, I want to say there's nothing wrong about believing God for nice things or this or that. But what is the reason? Why are you believing God for this? Why are you believing for your healing? And uh, what were you going to say? You're just agreeing? I'm totally agreeing with you. And again, there's nothing. I want to say this again. There's nothing wrong about having lots of money in a bank account. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong about having a nice car. You know, I don't know how to work on cars. So what do I do whenever I need, you know, to trade my car in? It needs to be a, a new car because it, there's, there's, I have confidence that I'm going to make it from, you know, A to B. A to B. So there's nothing wrong about believing God for nice things. It, and it's, again, when I get my nice thing, is it going to become an idol? Is it going to pull me away from the Lord? Or is it going to enhance my relationship with the Lord? Yeah. To say, Lord, I thank you. Thank you, Lord, for answered prayers. And so, again, what is our motive? You know, but you here we were seeing David's motive was to bring the presence of God in. But David didn't inquire the Lord or had inquired of how to do it by other priests. He just did what he thought he should do to bring it in. And so there was consequences. Let's move on. In verse 8, then David was angry because the Lord's wrath had broken out against Uzzah. And, to, and then it's going on to verse 9. David was afraid of the Lord that day. And you know what happens with people? They, because they're not seeing their breakthrough or they're not seeing answered prayers, they start to get an attitude with God. They start copying an attitude with God. And we have to reel in our emotions because that's the enemy. The enemy's saying, see, you, you believe in God for this? It didn't happen. Your God doesn't care about you. You know, you don't have enough faith. You don't have this. And when you start having those thoughts and stuff, that's a perfect time to get away with the Lord and reboot. Because once you start entertaining those thoughts, you know what happens? It starts to get bigger. It starts to snowball. You, you don't even, even talk to the Lord anymore because you're so mad and you're so upset and you're trying to come up with your own plan to do this and do that. And, and what you should have done or what I should have done is I should have went away with the Lord and I should have done a reboot. Mm -hmm. Okay, Lord, why has this happened or what happened or what did I do to miss the mark? Or maybe you didn't even miss the mark. Maybe it's just not time for it yet. Maybe, you know, remember the one who was, um, uh, I think he was blind by at birth, I think the story goes. And they kept on asking, whose fault is it? Is it the mother? 
You know, who sinned? And, and, and Jesus said, it's nobody's fault. This is for the glory of God. Maybe you haven't received or gotten to that place of your breakthrough or, or, or your healing or ble your blessing or whatever. It's, it's not time because the Lord's going to be glorified in it. You know, I mean, I'm just saying, I, but, but don't throw the, so to speak, throw the baby out with the bathwater. Just because you haven't seen your breakthrough or your blessing doesn't mean it's not going to happen. Right. You know, you keep on standing. You, you know, we may have to do, sometimes we've got to reboot our phone more than once in a week or maybe once in a day, or maybe your computer, or whatever it is. So you may have to do a reboot several times a day because, you know, the enemy's messing with you, and he's trying to get you from believing and trusting God. And you know what he wants to do? He wants you to begin to trust yourself and your the way that you can fix it. Since God isn't doing it, the devil is trying to get you to do it without God. So that you could say, look what I did instead of what God has done. Does that make sense? So rebooting isn't a bad thing. It just means that you need to just get away with the Lord and let him speak to you. Let's go on. Yeah, go ahead. Rebooting is like uh, <clears throat> what we should do is, uh, I believe, it's going in prayer. Absolutely. He's going to prayer. Start so when, there. There's where you start. Going yeah. in prayer. That way, that, I think that's how you reboot with God. Yeah. Like you said, that what is what did I do wrong? Or was this what you told me to do? Yeah. Perfect. Where did I miss? Because sometimes our stubbornness uh, and not listening, yeah. he can cuss us. Yeah. And uh, I believe in that very strongly. Well, yeah. And, you know, and the best thing to do is why, how do you reboot your phone or reboot your computer? You turn it off and then turn it back on. So to reboot, let's say, to turn off the world, turn off your thinking, and turn on prayer, turn on Jesus. So, you know, so you, you got to turn off your thoughts and your attitude and whatever it is. And then get in the presence of God. Turn on some praise and worship music. Get into prayer. You know, change the atmosphere. We talked about the atmosphere of faith on Sunday. How do you have an atmosphere of faith? You begin to worship. You begin to declare the word of God. And you also have to understand, it may not be anything you're doing wrong. It could be just a full, uh, outright attack of the enemy. And so when you reboot, you're going to the Lord and you're talking to him. He's going to say, the enemy is attacking you. This is what you need to do. You need to declare the word of God. You need to bind up those spirits, that, those demonic forces that are coming against you. Now, once you bind them up, don't just hold on to them. Cast them out. You know, a lot of people, I bind that spirit in the name of Jesus. Well, just don't bind it. You got to throw it out. What, I mean, you, you're binding it. Well, it's still there. You got to throw it out. And after you throw it out, then loose. You got to release. You got to loose. Now I loose the power of God. Now I declare the word of God and I release it right now over my situation, my circumstance. I take captive every thought and imagination that tries to raise itself above the knowledge of God. You start doing what the word of God says and, and taking captive every thought. And if you're getting an attitude, it's in your head, isn't it? So you got to take captive every thought and imagination. And it says to make it obedient to Christ. You got to, so again, don't take captive and not do anything with it. You got to make it obedient to Christ. Go ahead, Raymond. <laughs> Obedience is key. Yeah, it is in everything to receive. I'm thinking about this word reboot, like you said. I'm thinking about the, uh, the prophet Elijah when Jezebel wanted to uh, kill him. Mm. And he pleaded to the uh, uh, to the cave, mm -hmm. and uh, basically said, "You know, I want to die." And of course, we know that the angel of the Lord came and fed him, and all that. Would that be a reboot? Instead of reboot, or, or, or well, yeah, and because remember, with Elisha, you know, he's being fed, and then he gets in the cave, and and the Lord tells him to go outside and stand, and you know, he's going to hear from the Lord. And the thing of it is, he ran from Jezebel, 
he didn't, that wasn't the Lord telling him to run. He no. ran on his own. And then when he finally comes to the end of his rope, so to speak, to the dead end, mm -hmm. the Lord says, what are you doing here? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, he says, what are you doing here, Elijah? And he says, now go back. Mm -hmm. So the reboot, now the reboot can happen fast or we can cause it to take a long time. Meaning is if, you know, the first thing, if you call somebody to work on your computer, or your phone, the first thing they're going to say, did you reboot it? Mm -hmm. Because that can clean up clear up a lot of stuff and so no I didn't do it but I tried all these different things well that's how what we do sometimes instead of rebooting we try all these different things I know Pastor Bob you're you're probably relating to this a lot and I think a lot of us are in a sense um, but don't try a bunch of things without rebooting turning off your thoughts and your imaginations and your attitude my attitude then get to the Lord and start talking to Him. Why waste all that other that time? I'm preaching it myself right now. I preach it myself a lot because if this is a word for me as well as you, and I, I have not arrived. None of us have arrived. I'm still learning. I'm still trying to figure things out with the Lord. But don't try all these things without rebooting. You're going to waste more time. Like Elisha, if he would have just sought the Lord, Lord, Jezebel wants to kill me. What, what should I do? The Lord probably would have said, uh, do you remember you just slain 450 false prophets? Now, who is she that you just slain all these? You know, he, the Lord probably would have reminded him, look what you've already done, what I already did with you and for you. Why would you run from her? But he ran, and actually he's going to the mountain of God. You know, and I'll, the thing that is, why don't you seek the Lord like you did when you sought him during the time of before you killed all those prophets? So there's a lot I'm saying here, but yes. don't go the long way. A lot of times we go the long way. And uh, <laughs> Pastor Bob said, yep, you're speaking my language. <laughs> um, and we go the long way when we could actually take the short way if we would just reboot, get with the Lord. Now, let's go on so we can get to the uh, David's reboot. David's going to have a reboot. And it says here, it says, so David was afraid and that day. And he said, how can the ark of God ever come to me? And we're verse 9. He was an entire household, okay? So David was afraid. David was upset. So in, again, instead of seeking Lord, okay, Lord, I messed up. What did I do wrong? Because I want to bring you your presence into my city. And because I had your presence go to the house of Obadiah, he's getting the blessings. And my city isn't. Let's go on. Now, King David was told that the Lord had blessed the household of Obadiah and everything he has because of the ark of God. There's a work right there. Usher the presence of God in your house, in your life, in your day. You know, ooh, that's a word right there. Where the presence of the Lord is, there's the blessing. There's the breakthrough. Oh, praise God. Amen. That is a word right there. Usher his presence in. And his presence is in through worship, through his word. Um, you know, there's all, uh, you know, declaring his word, um, you know, being thankful, being thankful, you know, and not just murmuring, complaining about everything. Lord, it's so bad. Lord, you see how bad the team. Well, Lord, you know what? I'm going to lift you up and I'm going to thank you that you brought me this far and you're going to take me all, all the way in. And all these different ways to bring in his presence. And so he had heard everything he has because of the ark. So David went down, and it says, and he brought up the ark of God from the house of Obadiah in the, to the city of David with rejoicing. Okay? It's what they were doing before, right? Mm -hmm. And so it says, then he says, um, when those who were carrying the ark of the Lord, so that they don't have it on a card anymore, do they? It's the priests are carrying it the way it should be carried. And it says here, uh, when those who were carrying the ark of the Lord had taken six steps, he sacrificed a bull and a fattened calf. 
So every six steps they sacrificed before the Lord. And can you imagine how messy it got? And, you know, they're rejoicing, they're praising God, and, and they're doing a sacrifice every six steps. You know, that's where people need to get it. Church, perfect people don't necessarily go to church. Well, there's no perfect person anyway. But church can be messy. Messy people go to church. Mm -hmm. And just because you may not like the way they dress or the like the way they look or the like the way they act, doesn't mean that you should just throw them away. They're on their way uh, and they're waiting for somebody to show them and to be an example, to encourage them to worship. And let me show you how to worship. Let me show you how to get your praise on her. Let me show you how to get God's attention. You start by praising him and thanking him and being grateful for what he's done. The Bible says to enter his gates with thanksgiving and enter his courts with praise. Start there. Mm -hmm. And and you have to understand, not everybody is at the same level or the same place you are. Mm -hmm. And just because they're not at your quote unquote level or your place, you can't throw them away. You just got to continue to be an example and let and be that light yes. so that it can shine. Yes, that's perfect. And it, that's you perfect. have something? Yes. Speaking <laughs> of light and let it shine, you said it right on. Uh, this man was talking about, you know, how we're not all perfect. And he mentioned that we all have cracks in our lives. He says, by that, having cracks, that's how the light comes in and shines in. Ooh, you that's know, good. It, 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 it penetrates us. And if we were if we were perfect, we wouldn't need that light to shine, you know, inside us, and, you know, make us. Uh, there's a grace comes. In. You're talking about grace. This is where grace comes in. But I love that. How we said that we all have cracks, and the light and shines the light in. Shines in. That's how the light gets in there. So, is Raymond? I don't know if you all heard, but I think you did. Is that we all have cracks, and that's where the light of Christ shines in, and the healing begins, yeah. the restoration begins, the new creation uh, manifest. Because we're a new creation in Christ. So David's, they're, they're celebrating and they're sacrificing. In verse 14, it says, David wearing a linen ephod. That would be what a priest would wear. And so David has this understanding of that it's the priests that are bringing in um, the ark. And that's the way it needs to be done. So David wearing a linen ephod danced before the Lord with all his might while he and the entire house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouts and the sound of trumpets. That is a, a word there. You know, David and the whole house of Israel were rejoicing. If the king was doing it, then the people were doing it. Out of just respect for the king. You know, and, and today, in this day and age, the lack of respect, I, I've just... You know, we could go there and I don't want to because I, but it's the lack for respect for one another. Just because I don't agree with you doesn't give me a right to disrespect you. Yeah. We're to respect each other. Yeah. And so, you know, the king is rejoicing. The king, the king who should be sitting on his throne is rejoicing. I mean, just outright rejoicing. And the whole city is rejoicing with him. And it says here in verse 16. As the ark of the Lord was entering the city of David, uh, Michael, daughter of Saul, watched from a window. And when she saw King David leaping and dancing, it says, uh, it said, leaping and dancing before the Lord, she despised him in her heart. Now, I'm not going to go there. And there is more to the reason why Michael, the daughter of Saul, did not rejoice. And I was doing some research on this, and it's amazing. That, and I, just to give you, um, you know, David was promised um, Michael because of he fought uh, a battle for Saul, her father, and won it. Mm -hmm. And he was promised, or even with Goliath, I believe it was, promised a wife from Saul. And as the story goes, and Michael would have been the one he got, but Saul gave him his other daughter and and it's a whole story and i never knew this we're just thinking she despised him because he's dancing and being foolish but there's a lot more to this story 
and I'm going, I speak about a dysfunctional family thing. I mean, it was weird and stuff. But there was more to the story why Michael, the daughter of Saul, despised him. She actually very, loved David very much. You know, back then, wives were given to, they were, it was, um, uh, these marriages were put together by the parents. They were, re you know, arranged marriages. So, and same with the king. You know, you got, because you liked her, whether she liked you or not, when you said, I want her as my wife, you got her as your wife, whether she liked it or not. Well, and that's, sorry, buddy, that story that I remember, um, she was uh, kidnapped. I don't know if it's the same daughter. Well, there, yeah, yeah, there's a lot to it. I don't want to get okay. too far in it. But I just wanted you to understand there's more to this story than I even realized. Because I've always said, wow, she just despised the king and he's worshiped him. But there was more to it why she was despising him. And so just keep that in mind. And you know what that tells us to y'all? Is when you've been hurt as a young person or hurt by somebody you loved, you know, you just love this person and they just did you wrong. You start getting this attitude, don't you? And if, and it's, you don't, you put up walls because you don't want to be hurt again because you really gave this person your heart. And, and it takes time for healing. And, and then you get this attitude and you get this attitude when you see somebody like that person and all this stuff. But that's when we need to go and get a reboot, especially with relationships. And, and the interesting thing is, is people that go from relationship to relationship to relationship, and they're usually the same type of people they're drawn to because, and they have the same issues over and over. Why is that? And the, probably the reason is because we're drawn to the same type of people. You need to get healed of that. You might be attracted to the same type of people, but you need to make sure that that person has a heart that you can fall in love with that won't do you like the other person. But it comes back to that word of reboot, right? Especially when you get out of a relationship, I'm just gonna give you some advice. You can take it, you can pray about it. Don't go looking for another relationship. Right. You need time to get healed. Yes. And it takes time. It Sometimes it takes years. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't wanna be alone. Well, you, it's worth the investment to invest in a reboot with the Lord so he can touch your heart, he can heal you, so that you won't be drawn to the same behavior of certain people so that you go through this over and over again. You need your healing. You need time to process and heal. And so just keep that in mind. Don't rush into things. Don't rush into relationships. There's a word. I'm going to be old fashioned. Date. There's a word. And so I'm just throwing that out. Anyway, let's go on. I don't want to get all, <laughs> there's all kinds of stuff. And so anyway, so before the Lord, she despised him in her heart. In verse 17, it says, they brought the ark of the Lord and set it in its place inside the tent that David had pitched for it. So David pitched a tent for it. And David sacrificed burnt offerings and fellowship offerings before the Lord. After he had finished sacrificing the burnt offerings and the fellowship offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord Almighty. So the first thing he's doing, number one, he's ushering the presence of God into his city. He has a place for the Lord to be placed in. You know what? There's, there's sometimes, you know, it's good to make a place in your home or uh, you know, in your room or something, that you have a designated place to go speak with the Lord. Mm -hmm. And what it does, it helps you get focused. Mm -hmm. And I'm just saying, you know, I, I during the, <laughs> not so much the summer, I like to go sit on my patio and pray, or I'll come over here, you know, over the church or whatever it is. But it, it's, you make a designated place to go spend time with the Lord because it will help bring focus into why you're there. So David pitches his tent, and he and he's what is he doing? He's putting the Lord first. Ding, 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 ding. I'm going to give some, uh, you know, if we don't put the Lord first, why do we expect him to bless us or break through for us? Because what we do, if the Lord isn't first in our life, 
what will happen is when you get your breakthrough or your, you know, you start to see it, you're going to give credit to other things or yourself instead of the Lord. That's why it's important. The Lord comes first. And so it says, after he had finished, so he pitches the tent and David sacrificed burnt offerings and fellowship offerings before the Lord. So that's where the Lord is. The presence is. After he had finished sacrificing the burnt offerings and the fellowship offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord Almighty. So he blesses them. You know, the word bless is to speak well of. A curse is you speak negative of. A blessing is, I just thank you, Lord, for, I want you to get a bless Raymond tonight or today or whatever it is. Lord, pour out your blessings upon him. Uh, Juan Carlos, I thank you that you serve a God, the Lord of the breakthrough. I think he's going to cause a breakthrough in your life. And you start declaring the word of God over somebody. You know, your blessing will take on uh, substance. It sounds like, well, just bless him, Lord. But he, when you start declaring the word of God over somebody, um, <laughs> so, no, never mind. And, and so uh, when you start to declare the word of God over somebody, then what it's doing, remember, his word will not return void without accomplishing. So you go beyond it just saying, bless you, right? So David's blessing the people um, in the name of the Lord. Then he gave them a loaf of bread, a cake of dates, a cake of raisins. In different translations, it says different items. But here, just take it as there was a threefold blessing. You know, and everybody, it says, let me not get it. So then he gave a loaf of bread, a cake of uh, dates, and a cake of raisins to each person in the whole crowd of the Israelites, both men and women. You know what I got? It's very symbolic of what David's doing. You know, the whole kingdom is getting these three items. Now, I can't really say, you know, when I hear what they're getting, that's not really a whole lot, is it? But... Remember, it says here, and I'm just getting revelation, y'all, as we're doing this. It says, after he had finished sacrifice, we're going back to 18. He, after he finished sacrificing the burnt offerings and the fellowship offerings unto the Lord, right? Mm -hmm. He blessed the people in the name of the Lord Almighty. Ooh, praise God. Praise God. He blessed the people. Do you guys get this tonight, those listening? He blessed the people in the name of the Lord Almighty. He declared a blessing over them. Maybe we need to do that before we leave tonight. Please. Is that all right if we get blessed tonight before we Amen. leave? Or Please. today, whatever you're listening to this. Then, what is he doing? He's giving them a, a loaf of bread, a cake of dates, and a cake of raisins where there's evidence. There's, there's, uh, you know, it's kind of like when you see something, it helps you believe. You take hold of it. So he blesses them in the name of the Lord, and then he gives everybody in the city these three items. And chances are they probably had some type of meaning of these three things. Because God doesn't do anything without there's something about the reason why these items are being used. But for we're just focusing tonight about reboot. But I'm getting revelation, y'all. You're sitting under the Holy Spirit giving us revelation tonight. I believe, Pastor Jan, I believe God is speaking to you big time. And, and all those listening right now, the Lord is speaking to you about this. And I'm just going to stop right now. Lord, I lift up each person listening to my voice, listening to this word, and I declare the blessing of the Lord, yes, Lord. the blessing of the Lord, in the name of the Lord Almighty upon each and every one right now. You are the Lord of the breakthrough. You are causing breakthrough right now. You're causing healing to take place right now. You're causing restoration to take place right now. Lord, those, those things and, 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 uh, that people have been standing and believing you for tonight, I thank you for the manifestation because of the blessing of the Lord. The people received something after David had blessed them. And, and I believe it was very symbolic of how he blessed them. And tonight, I declare over each and every one of you right now that you are blessed and highly favored of the Lord. And I give you, we give you all the praise and the glory right now. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You know what the Lord put on my heart to do, y'all? After you just received this blessing, 
you need to do something and in a way of giving somebody something. Now, I'm not telling you to go out and buy somebody lunch or something, but I think it's something about this. After David blessed the people, he gave them something. There's something about that. I don't know if it locked in the blessing or the, it was to help their faith in believing in the blessing. But I think, believe the Lord was wanting you to be a blessing this week. You know, do something to be a blessing, whether it's to call somebody, encourage them or text them or something. Do something to seal that blessing. Yes. Ooh, I just get that. Go ahead. As you were talking, <clears throat> this reminds me of, of the feeding of the 5,000 where Jesus blessed the bread and the fish, and then he gave it to uh, the apostles, and then they gave it to the people. Yeah. And, and and like you said, you just brought a good word out, you know, bless somebody, do something as the apostles, as they gave out the bread and the fish, and, and it blessed all the people. And they all, you know, they were all full of feel. You know, you're right on. I think what the church, and remember, we were talking about this earlier, the building isn't the church. We are the church. Yes. We as believers are the church. And I believe the church, why the church is not seeing the manifestation of the blessing and the breakthrough is because we're not operating with the blessing. The blessing isn't flowing through us. We're not doing anything. We're, we're just sitting back to receive for ourselves and we're not doing anything. David blessed them and then he gave them something. He did something about it. And we know David's blessed. I mean, you read about David, you know, he was blessed. Super blessed. Yeah. But, but the thing that is, there's something about that that stands out, uh, to me tonight about, and I never got this until just right now. David blessed him in the name of the Lord Almighty and then he gave them a threefold blessing. There's three. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Three cords are not easily broken. There's something about, and three, there's an anointing upon threes. So I would encourage you for the rest of this week, I'm not demanding you, I'm not trying to tell you this is how you're going to, you know, buy a blessing or you're going to do this, but I think it's, I believe it's going to activate your blessing. It's going to activate the blessing that I just blessed you with. I just declared, and I'm going to, I'm going to be corrected right now. I blessed you in the name of the Lord. I didn't do it, but the Lord has blessed you. Do something with it. Yeah. You don't have to spend a bunch of money if you don't, you know, it's not about that. It's the action. It's the, it, it's the kindness. You know, it's, it's, th that's what the church needs more of is we can't just expect God to bless us all day long. Lord, bless me, bless me, bless me, and not be a blessing. You know, you give to receive. You got to give to receive. Yeah, right? and, and it's, and, but see, there's another thing. It's balance. The balance is don't give expecting, well, you know, I'm going to do this, so God will do this for me. Just do it out of kindness. Out of your kindness of and, your heart. and know the Lord will take care of your stuff. Even though if it doesn't, well, because I, you know, Blessed be the Lord, whether you get it or not. Yeah. And you have to understand, your blessing may not be what you expect. See, and that's where it trips people up, too. Well, I did this because I was expecting God to do this for me. Well, why don't you do it to bless the Lord? And he knows your heart, remember? He says, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. Then those things, he says, I already know that you have need of them. He says, you seek my kingdom and my righteousness then those things will be added as well. You'll, you'll get those things, but don't be that what you seek. Seek me, and I'll take care of that. Seek the, it's why he says, seek the kingdom of God first, yep. and everything else will be added to you. Yep. Well, let's finish this up, and it looks like this is going to be all we're going to get to tonight. <laughs> But I think it's been real powerful. Y'all been feeling in the spirit and in the, getting revelation. Let's finish this up. And verse 20 says, when David returned home to bless his household, Michael, daughter of Saul, came out to meet him and said, how the king of Israel has dis uh, distinguished himself today, disrobing in the sight of the slave girls and of his servants and his, uh, as an, a vulgar fellow would. David said to Michael, it was before the Lord who chose me rather than your father or anyone from his house when he appointed me ruler over the Lord's people, Israel, I will celebrate before the Lord. 
I will become even more undignified than this, and I will be humiliated in my own eyes, but by these slave girls you spoke of, I will be held in honor. Ooh. You know what? Sometimes you've got to just honor the Lord, and it may embarrass you. I'm not telling you to get weird and stuff, but sometimes the Lord might say, you know what, I want you to go over there and tell somebody this and that. Well, Lord, that's embarrassing. They may need to hear that word that may encourage them. It may embarrass you, but if you're doing it for the right reason, God will cover you in that. Now, and Michael, daughter of Saul, had no children to the day of her death. Now, just to give you a little information, not to get deep, she had had children before. She'd been married before. So she's already had children before. And the reason why I'm telling you this is because from that moment on, when she cur basically cursed David, the king, disrespected, from that moment on, she didn't have any more children. So it means she's had children before. It doesn't mean she can't have children in the natural way. It's because she disrespected the anointing. The, what David was doing under the Lord had caused her not to have children anymore. So just be careful. You know what? If you don't have anything nice to say, don't say it. You know, just because... Somebody may be doing something you don't agree with. You don't know the reason why they're doing it or saying it. They might be hurt. But, or this preacher on television, oh, they're dropping like flies, all the mega churches, da 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 da. You have to understand, you don't gloat about it because what's it doing it? It's affecting a lot of people. Yes. It's affecting a lot of people. It's causing people to even, even question their faith. Mm -hmm. And that's the devil loves that. So instead of talking about that minister, that pastor, or that whatever who's fallen, you know what you need to do? You need to pray. pray. pray and it, well, I don't agree with it. It doesn't matter if you agree. You you need to just pray and don't talk about him or her or whatever. You know, the, they're God's anointed. They messed up. They messed up big time or whatever. You know, don't be distracted by that. Just be focused on the Lord and let him use you for his glory. Can you say amen? amen. And there's Paula. Good evening. Um, so anyway, Pastor Tony had a lot to say tonight. No, the Lord had a lot to say tonight. I love Jesus. Amen. I love Jesus. And I'm telling you right now, I'm not perfect. <laughs> I'm far from being perfect. I'm learning along the way. I make mistakes. But you know what? I love Jesus. You love Jesus. And when you mess up, just go and reboot and get back in the flow of things with the Lord. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word tonight or today, whatever day, time you're listening. Lord, right now, we lift you up. You be glorified. You be exalted. Lord, may it always be about you. Lord, I know that I know, we know that you are so good to us. Even when we mess up, you're always good. You're always faithful. Lord, right now we shake off all the stuff that the enemy wants to put on us. We thank you, Lord, right now. We let it all go. We lay it down at the cross. We cast our cares upon you, Lord. Lord, continue to lead us and guide us. Remind us to reboot when we need to reboot. So right now, may we shine your light wherever we go. May it show us in who to bless this week. In yes. Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you all. Uh, thank you for uh, joining us tonight. Uh, don't forget Sunday. Uh, we have church Facebook Live at 11 o'clock. Uh, it will be put on face or uh, it's going to be on Facebook uh, for 30 days. So if you miss it on Sunday, you can find the sermon uh, anytime for any time you want to listen to it. But also on YouTube, uh, go ahead and um, subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel and that you'll be notified every time there's a new message, whether it's Bible study or a sermon. God bless you. Go out and be a blessing to each and every person across your path. See you next time.